Jonathan Thomas Mouche, how's it going? Uh, you know, we were just trying to figure out how to refer to you, and we thought about Jonathan Taylor Thomas Mouche. Um, don't know if that would be, be offensive to you or not. Um, if not, if you don't know who that is, then you need to go get the box set of Home Improvement. Yeah. That show. And watch it with your dad. Because <laughs> dads laugh at that show. My dad would lose it. <laughs> well, you know, I was watching your video, and I, 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 I'm hoping that you swallowed the mouthwash. Because I was convinced <laughs> that you were doing mouthwash, and I'm hoping you weren't just faking me out there. Um, but uh, on, on another side note, on a third side note here... Um, you need to call up Reliant K and let them know if Matthew Thiessen can never make it to a show that you could probably fill in, um, or you could at least pass as his younger brother. Uh, that's all I could think is that I'm watching Matt Thiessen as a as a younger guy here. So um, if anyone wondered, that's a big compliment too, by the way. If coming anyone from me. wondered how big of a Reliant K fan Jeremiah Austin is, you should know by the fact that he found a way to squeeze that dude into two videos in two days. <laughs> So, I think that's twice the amount of Reliant K content as a normal MyEpic video. Yeah. So. I would say so. Um, your question about our little girl is a really good one. Um, that song was when, when sort of coming to the close of that record. A lot of times we write a song and we I start having melody ideas, and I'll even be singing. We call them dummy lyrics, and we know they're not the real lyrics because they don't mean anything. Um, and we we were talking about what, and a lot of times early on we know this song's gonna be about this, or this song's gonna be about that. Um, and other times it's like down to the wire and, and that was one of the ones that I didn't, we didn't really know what to do with it and then uh, I had kind of gone through a breakdown because until I'm Undone I wrote every lyric by myself and I just came to the, Jesse and Jeremiah just, just broke down we were like a week away and I had nothing I had nothing like maybe one song and I just was like guys I can't do it it's too much pressure and all these songs were getting completed and they sounded awesome and, and I wasn't going to be able to hold up my other end of it so Jeremiah and I and Jesse started just sitting up late at night, especially Jeremiah would just kind of sit as my sounding board and, and help me work through things. And one of the ideas he had as we were getting close, he's like, you know, we've never done a, 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 a song that really tells a story. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were like, oh, that's cool. What would we do? And I had, we had talked about, uh, about divorce, you know, about writing a song that dealt with divorce because we had read a lot about uh, divorce and we've been around enough of it. None of us have thankfully gone through divorce in our family. But uh, we've been around enough of it to like have learned and gleaned some things out of it. Um, and so Jeremiah had a picture in his head, I think was how it started, mm -hmm. of, um, of a little girl bringing uh, a, a little girl's drawing, a painting to her parents. And they're looking at it together. And at first it looks like a really, just a cute little kid painting or picture. Um, but then as, as the more they look at it, the more they're seeing all these things that aren't right. Like, like the, the plants in the front are way too big and all these... And they start realizing it's it's showing all these things in their marriage that she's seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, even as a little girl, she's noticing that the relationship between her parents is not healthy. And that moment uncovers uh, the the down the, the end of a marriage. All this stuff's been bottled up, and this little kid's drawing just sort of brings it all to an end. And I know that we never explained any of that, but uh, when the record came out, um, we gave this idea to our friend Kent, who's a really brilliant writer. And Kent wrote a short story out of it. And then me and Kent pretty much wrote the lyrics off the short story. Mm -hmm. So it sort of was like we had a concept for, an, for a story. We sent it to Kent. Kent wrote, wrote the actual story. And then we wrote the lyrics after he wrote the story. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a ping pong. Um, and uh, it was just really about all the things that – I mean the main idea I think is just that – I think a lot of people in relationships, but especially in marriages, expect the other person to make them happy. Mm -hmm. And no one's able to make you happy but the Lord. And so eventually there's that picture where it says that um, like, it's like a fruit that grows so big, that it, it, but it doesn't. The tree never lets go of it, and it eventually pulls the tree to the ground and kills it. Uh, and that was really a really brilliant picture to me of, and that was something Kent came up with, I think. that Because uh, we just told him that the kid's picture was jacked up, and that it was weird. <laughs> and he came up with all these brilliant pictures that illustrated a failed marriage, and that was one of them. It was this fruit that grows so big, and, and um, like expecting someone else to make you happy is eventually a burden that no one else can bear, mm -hmm. and will just destroy a relationship. Um, so the, our little girl was just thinking about from the aspect of the couple, uh, and what's actually crazy about that um, is um, within the next year, uh, we had uh, I, we had a divorce from a really close friend. Went through divorce really close after and it was amazing how much it was true in his life and how hard it was and and he even talked about it like about how it was helpful and how it was true um so it was it was like 
the Lord sort of was giving us some insight we were going to need pretty soon. But yeah. yeah, we've never done it before or since, but I'm really glad we did. Yeah, you know, I've, I've actually, I feel like I have more, um, I've learned more about the, the concept since writing it than before we wrote it. I feel like I have a better grasp of, of some things. And one thing uh, that I feel we've learned since then, especially since a lot of us and our friends have been getting married, is... Um, you know, we talk about on Broken Voice in Child, Body, Bride that that's one of the images that God gives us um, of the way that He loves the church. And so if that's one of the three uh, images of it, of course that's going to be one of the biggest areas that the enemy attacks. It's going to be a marriage. Um, and now that when we wrote that, none of us were married. But now that I had been married, I can see that attack and I can see how if you don't put effort into it, if you don't keep your ducks in a row and understand what true love is uh, towards your mate and you put your focus, you know, I, I, we don't have children yet, but I can see it. Like if, we, if, we, if we're not careful, we can, you know, focus so much on our kid and on other things that we can just all of a sudden look up one day and our kid is showing us that, you know, we may have a house and we may have, you know, everything, but we, we're lacking love. You know, which is another, you know, picture that God gives us. If you have all these things that have not um, love, then what's the value? And, it, and it's, it's a really great picture, too, for your spiritual life. Because there's that line that you mentioned where, you know, you, you want to try to fix it, but you're laying in bed and miles of words and deeds are in between and you can't get past them. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing we do in our spiritual life. We, we let all this stuff build up that we don't deal with. We don't confess. We don't move on from and in a relationship, when people get divorced, they, they, they kind of talk about growing apart, growing apart. And eventually, it feels like it's too late to even talk about, which I, I don't think is true to the grace of God. I think anything can be overcome. But, um, but, but in your spiritual life, I think a lot of times we, when things start to go bad, we just stop talking to the Lord. We stop reading the Word. And then when we finally get, come under conviction again, when the Lord, in my opinion, when the Lord is gracious enough to come find us and give us conviction again, um, sometimes we, we don't know where to start. And uh, the beautiful thing with the Lord uh, is that you never have to go find him. You don't have to go figure out where you left off. He's still standing right behind you saying like, hey, like throw it aside. Let's just move on. And I think about that a lot. Like if I were to offend Jeremiah and then was like, well, I, since I offended him and hurt his feelings, I'll just never talk to him again. Like that would be 10 times more hurtful mm -hmm. than whatever I did because now I robbed him of our friendship and of all of everything we've been through. And that's what we do to the Lord every time. We mess up. We go, well, I'm just not going to talk to the Lord anymore because I'm such a screw up. Uh, and we make it 10 times worse instead of just falling on his grace. So I know that's a little extra add-on that you didn't ask for. But um, but yeah, Our Little Girl is uh, was one of my favorite songs to write on that record and record. Um, we've only played it live once and we'll probably never play it again. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Uh... When we first released that record, what the first, very first show, we decided that we'd play the entire record, and that was one of the worst decisions we've ever made as a band. Yeah, that was that was show. awful. Or just not that good. <laughs> be real, be real with you, bro. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for asking, uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas Mouche. We appreciate it, and uh, and I'll just in case yeah. you were wondering. Maggie's been cooking something. That's all been all the extra noise. Yeah. What do you mean? We're going to be in big trouble if we don't let people in on that now. We just have to tell them what they'll wonder. I'm starting dicing stuff for the soup. Maybe. She's making soup. Okay. So if you show up tomorrow, we'll serve you some soup. Yeah. And we're having really good friends over tomorrow, so. So you'll, yeah, you'll fit right in. Just thought you should know. Cool. Thank you. Later. Grace and peace.